Virgin Galactic's Spaceship 2 took its first test passenger into space today. It is the second trip to space for Virgin Galactic. Virgin says the ship reached a peak of more than 55 miles and traveled more than three times the speed of sound. Virgin Galactic made its first space flight back in December. It is the latest swing in the space race between billionaires Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos. Branson's Virgin Galactic is in competition with Bezos's Blue Origin to see which company can make the first commercial flights into space. Joining me now are Michael Masucci, Dave McKay, and George Whitesides. Michael is a pilot for Virgin Galactic. Dave is the chief pilot for Virgin Galactic. Both Dave and Michael flew on Virgin's Spaceship 2 today. And George is the CEO of Virgin Galactic. Welcome to all of you. A pleasure to talk to you about this. It's very exciting. Dave and Michael, let me start with you. This was your first trip into space, correct? How did it feel? Uh, it, uh, it felt uh, fantastic. Um, it's a little bit hard to describe. Um, it's a very, very exciting rocket motor ride up there. Um, a, a lot a very high acceleration for a long period of time. And then when the motor shuts down, uh, you, you feel this incredible sensation of uh, weightlessness and silence. And, um, but the, the views are absolutely extraordinary. The, the blackness of uh, the sky, of space, um, in contrast with the, the real brightness of uh, the Earth's surface. And, um, it, it, for me, it was extraordinary how much I could see, how far I could see. I could see so far, I couldn't recognize anything. Um, and the atmosphere was just looks very, very thin. Uh, beautiful, but extremely thin and fragile. And so I think that's a lesson to all of us that we really have to look after the atmosphere around our planet. And uh, the science of space was uh, just extraordinary. An, an amazing experience. It will take me a few days. Uh, if not weeks to assimilate uh, everything that went on on that flight, but uh, extraordinary. It sounds yeah, well, quite overwhelming. I just want to ask Michael, maybe you could tell us, I'm sure you anticipated what it would be like many times before you actually were there. Were there specific things that surprised you or seemed different than what you expected? Yes, and, and that was something I wanted to comment about. It was a very surreal experience, especially as we reached the apogee of our, of our uh, height uh, on how still and quiet everything was. I was not expecting that actually. Uh, you know, there's a lot of systems on board the airplane that are doing their part, but when we actually got to the apogee point with the beautiful views down south of uh, Baja, California, well east of Nevada, and then uh, way north of the San Francisco Bay, uh, it, it was just very surreal on how quiet it was and still it was, like we were just standing there still uh, before re-entry. So it, that was the biggest surprise for me. Sounds stunning. Now, George, your boss, Sir Richard Branson, said he wants to take his first space flight by the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. That is this July. So what needs to happen between now and then to make sure Virgin Galactic is on schedule? Well, that's a great question, and today's flight was a huge step forward towards that goal. Obviously, what we need to do is to finish our test flight program. We need to finish the interiors test flight program. Today, flying Beth Moses, our chief astronaut instructor, was a huge step forward uh, towards that, and she's gained uh, some really good lessons that she's debriefing actually right now as we speak. Um, you know, we're going to fly uh, Richard when we're ready, um, but I think that we're making great progress right now, and so, um, you know, we're all very excited about that now. It is very exciting, but it's also a little scary, especially to a lot of people to make that mental leap. How can you ensure that this will be a safe voyage for passengers? Well, you know, I mean, Dave should talk to this as well, but I think what we've tried to do from the very start is to embed safety into every aspect of our technology and every aspect of our operations. We think air launch, which is what we do, um, is a great way to start. We use a very simple rocket motor, and we have a, a patented uh, re-entry system called the Feather that helps a lot. And of course, taking off horizontally and landing horizontally, just like you would in any plane, I think makes people feel a lot more comfortable. So, you know, we're really, really excited about the safety features that we've got embedded into the vehicle. Yeah. And Dave and Michael, as you know, astronaut trainer Beth Moses was on the flight. How was her experience and what will the typical routine be like for passengers once they reach space? 
Uh, so I, I think um, Beth had a fantastic experience up there. Um, I was actually quite jealous beforehand uh, when she was describing what she was going to be doing up there. Uh, typically, there's a saying in aviation that the pilots have the best seat in the house. You know, they, we have the windows looking looking outside on the world. And and actually, I think today maybe Beth had had the best seat in the house because <laughs> she had many wind many large windows back there, and uh, we, of course we allowed her to unstrap. Mike and I, Mike Masici and I, uh, we don't unstrap, unfortunately. We mm -hmm. can't uh, enjoy the amazing experience of weightlessness, but uh, Beth was allowed to unstrap and, uh, and uh, float around in the cabin and look at the views from uh, the, the various, uh, the, the many large windows that we have back there. Um, I think she had uh, um, an amazing experience, a life-changing experience back there. And passengers will be and able I to do that, unstrap and float around? Is that the ultimate goal? Absolutely, that's our plan. Yes, absolutely. So, George, is Virgin Galactic worried at all about competition from Blue Origin? You know what? Um, we're not, and I'll tell you why. It's because I think what we share, um, what Richard shares, and what I share, and, and what uh, Jeff and I think Elon feel, is that we want to open up space for everyone, right? You know, for a long time, space has just been the province of government folks. And I used to work at NASA. I'm a huge fan of NASA. But I think we really need to open up space to everyone because that's going to have huge impacts on the planet, how we treat the planet, and, and a lot of benefits for planet Earth. And so I think having more uh, operators um, operate in space are great. They're not too many, right? There's just a small hand. Handful. And, uh, you know, we're really happy to be making the progress that we are making. But I think it's good to have um, competitors because that's what makes America great, you know, innovation and competition. We're, in, we're all in favor of it. Michael Masucci, Dave McKay, and George Whiteside, thanks to all of you. Very exciting to talk about space travel with you. Thank you. Thank you.